Okay, so in this video, we've got a very specific function. We've got t plus 3 times by t plus 1. So you can say f of t equals that if you like. And we need to work out what the integral of that function is um, between the values of t equals 0 and t equals 1. So remember, that's what this, this whole notation means. The integral from t equals 0 to t equals 1, and I'm using t because our function is in terms of t, of this function with respect to t. That's what it means. And we're going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus in order to solve this, which to remind you, I'll have to erase it in a second, but to remind you, it basically says that the integral of f of x dx between a and b is given by f of b minus f of a, where f dash of x, big F dash of x equals little f of x. Okay, so remember, that's the fundamental theorem of calculus. Um, and we're going to use this particular rule. I might actually leave it there for the whole slide. Um, we will use a particular rule to solve the problem on the left there. Don't get confused with the fact that I've got t's instead of x's. x is just the variable. And that's why the dx is so important, because it says with respect to that variable. So we've got a dt here, so we're all good to go. So let's have a look at it. How do we evaluate it? Well, the first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to integrate t plus 3 times t plus 1. And by itself, it's not very integratable. Um, so I'm just going to take it. Uh, you'll see I'll do this quite, quite a bit. I'll put the 1 on the, on the left there. I don't know. It's a bad habit I got into. It's not right. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that function And I'm going to expand it because I think that's going to be the easiest way to solve this problem. I'll keep it in brackets because it's a whole function. So t times t is t squared. And then I've got 3 times t is 3t. And I'm going to have a t times 1 is 1t. So 3 and 1 is 4t. And then 3 times 1 is 3. So I'm just doing all in one fell swoop there. You could do it in two or use the box method, whatever you want to if you prefer. Okay. So that's pretty good. Um, and now I'm going to in, uh, find the integral of t squared plus 4t plus 3. That's not so bad to do. It's equal to t cubed, and then put the third underneath that, plus um, 4t squared, and then I have to multiply that by a half, and then I've got plus 3t. Now here's the notation that we're going to use. Um, because we're doing a definite integral instead of an indefinite definite integral, instead of putting the plus c there, I'm going to put square brackets around the whole thing, and I'm going to put the boundaries over here to the right, so between 1 and 0. Now, I think I might just do a little bit of simplification. A third t cubed, a half times 4 is 2, plus 3t, between 1 and 0. And now I do my evaluation, and the evaluation simply means substitute the boundary numbers for t um, using the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, so here we go. It's a bit of a longer one, so I might just um, draw across the screen here a little bit to, to fit it all in. So I'll just colour that in there. Da, 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 da. There you go. It wasn't worth it, was it? But anyway, I've done it now. Okay, so that's equal to a third multiplied by 1 cubed plus 2 multiplied by 1 squared plus 3 multiplied by 1 minus, and I'm going to use my brackets here because it's so easy to make silly mistakes if you um, don't forget to put your brackets in. Um, in this case, it's pretty, pretty boring though. 0 cubed, sorry, a third times 0 cubed. Uh, plus 2 times 0 squared, plus 3 times 0, close brackets. So that's the fundamental theorem of calculus, okay? So if I just colour code a little bit, we've got f of b, and there's f of b there, and then we've got f of a, and then there's a there, okay? So we now continue to do the evaluation, although it's a bit of a boring one. I think I'll just go over here to finish it off. So I'm going to have a third times one cubed, that's a third, plus two times one squared, which is two, plus three times one, which is three. 
And then we're going to be subtracting, well, I think we can probably do this bit in our head, right? Zero cubed plus two times zero squared plus three times the whole thing zero. So we're taking away zero. So we're actually ending up with just that, which is equal to five and a third as our final answer. So it's a pretty straightforward one, this one. Um, so the important thing to take away from this particular problem is the, um, I guess, the setting out. Uh, and then uh, um, in the next video, I might do a more complicated um, example. So we start off with our initial um, definite integral. And then in this case, I've expanded it because it's going to be easier to deal with. I then uh, work out the antiderivative or the integral of it and simplify it. And I use these square brackets to say that I'm working with a definite integral 1 to 0, 1 to 0. And then these two boundaries get substituted in like so. And that gets us to our final answer. Okay. So that's as far as uh, we need to go on this one. Um, the, just the one thing I will point out, it was pointed out in the videos you have watched previously, but just to remind you that when we're dealing with definite integrals, we do not need the plus C because um, we're evaluating um, something specific. So we're going from the general family of functions, which is what the, uh, an indefinite integral gives us, to a very specific one. Um, another way of thinking about it too is that if I did put the plus C at this point, I'd have a plus C here and I'd have a minus C here, and the C and the minus C would cancel out. So there's actually no point in including it because they would always cancel out because they're always the same value. Okay, um, so hopefully that's enough to get you going, and um, I'll come back with a more complicated example in a moment.